Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Michael Warner. I'm the co-founder of the Alliance for Regenerative Medicine. I want to welcome you to our annual um, meeting on the MESA. Uh, we expect it to be another great, great meeting and certainly wish all of you good luck and all of the sessions and workshops and all of your business development meetings and also, of course, hope you get some time to enjoy the beautiful weather and um, facilities here at the Estancia Hotel. Uh, this morning's workshop is entitled uh, Doing Business in Japan. It's done in partnership with our friends at the uh, Forum for Innovative Regenerative Medicine, the firm. Um, and I'm going to turn it over now to the chair of the workshop, Kuniko Suzuki, who is the vice chairman of FIRM and also vice chairman and member of the board of Medinet. Suzuki-san. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, even here it is uh, quite early in the morning, but uh, there are a lot of people here. I'm very happy to see all of you here. And uh, uh, the, I will move to the, uh, we have the limited time, so uh, the, I will move to the uh, speakers. And uh, I just introduce the uh, uh, first speaker. It comes from the Japanese uh, Ministry of Economy and Trade and Industries, uh, Director, Bio-Industry Divisions, uh, Mr. Masahiro Wimura. He will explain about the uh, industrialization in Japan for the uh, industrialization of the regional basin in Japan. Please, uh, the Mr. Wimura. Thank you, Chair. So uh, I have uh, around 15 minutes. So I'd like to uh, talk about the uh, METI's uh, activities uh, in this area. So how can I present my presentation? Thank you. So, uh, Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, METI, uh, is in charge of the uh, industrialization of uh, this regenerative medicine field. So, first of all, I'd like to talk about the uh, estimated market of Japan in Japan. So, we think regenerative medicine is one of the most important industries in Japan. Uh, many experts uh, stated that market of regenerative medicine would grow rapidly. To better understand the size of the opportunity, METI developed market projections for regenerative medicine uh, products and services. The left graph shows the result of our calculations uh, for Japanese market. You can see that the market for regenerative medicine in Japan is set for major potential growth. It will reach a 10 billion US dollars in 2030 and 25 billion dollars in 2050. At global perspective, uh, it will reach uh, 120 billion US dollars in 2030 and 380 billion US dollars in 2050. Uh, this, this estimate uh, is based on the combination uh, of interviews with experts in regenerative medicine and relevant research. Uh, Japanese government has three ministries uh, that have the project. Uh, related to medical research and development. Ministry of Science and Technology is in charge of basic research. Uh, Ministry of Health handles clinical research, while we met uh, tackles supporting companies and promoting industrialization. Uh, because of uh, organizational inefficiency, uh, governmental budget allocation was not thought to be best. So in order to more efficiently promote medical research, and development, uh, including regenerative medicine. Japan Agency for Medical Research and Development, uh, AMED, AMED uh, was established as a new national research and development agency in April 2015. Functions and allocations of national medical R&D funding formerly operated by three ministries were integrated to the AMED. So thanks to this organi organizational uh, reform, we expect that high-quality products of regenerative medicine 
would be provided quickly at low cost in Japan. Um, this is a schematic view of approval of regenerative medicine. I think uh, my colleagues will uh, explain uh, more uh, detail at the uh, following, uh, following the explanations. So, uh, Ministry of Health, uh, Labor and Welfare uh, revised the Pharmaceutical and Medical <coughs> Devices Act uh, to introduce an early approval system. Uh, this is a system for or conditionally approving regenerative medicine products before phase three of clinical trials based on uh, the confirmation of safety and likely efficacy of regenerative medicine products, uh, this system, uh, these systems uh, make it possible to uh, shorten a period for approval. After approval, of course, it is possible to market products, but it is necessary to conduct patient follow-up to confirm safety and efficacy further. Many people regard this new system as a revolution. Not only Japanese companies, but also foreign companies are getting into the regenerative medicine business in Japan. Uh, in addition, uh, the new act permits a, con a contract cell manufacturing process. In the former system, uh, the whole uh, cell uh, manufacturing process must be done inside of a hospital and operated uh, only by medical doctors. Under the new act, uh, the cell manufacturing process can be outsourced. This change will lead to significant efficacy, ef uh, efficiency gains in terms of cost and quality. So under the new act, uh, two products uh, were uh, approved. So uh, based on the new act of 2014, so these two products uh, approved in 2015. Uh, JCR Pharma Corporation uh, on the right side, uh, this is a, a regular approval, but on the left side, Telmo Corporation uh, got a conditional approval. So Telmo Corporation uh, conducted only seven uh, clinical trials before getting their conditional approval. It was not possible to get such approval uh, with uh, so smaller numbers of trials under the former regulations. So Telmo's approval demonstrated that the new uh, new approval system uh, enables to uh, shorten the time period of getting an approval. So this is, uh, and after uh, enforcement of new acts in Japan, uh, the uh, number of uh, regenerative medicine uh, products under development as clinical trial phases uh, is inc increasing about uh, five times. So. Uh, this, uh, this new act uh, definitely uh, stimulates to the uh, develop of new uh, RM-related products and services. So when we talk about regenerative medicine, we tend to focus uh, too much on products such as skin, retina, and cardiac cell seeds. However, regenerative medicine starts from cells harvested from the human body, then moves to culturing, cell processing, large quantity culturing, testing, and delivering to patients. So surrounding this uh, cycle, there are various supporting industries. So this supply chain is very important in terms of promoting uh, regenerative medicine products and services, and also uh, contributing to the field of innovative drug discovery. Uh, METI, Mm, in order to uh, encourage uh, regenerative medicine uh, industry businesses, METI provides uh, various promotion measures. For example, so R&D project uh, for or process innovation, so for devices and consumable suppliers, and also uh, evaluation methods uh, in order to obtain uh, good uh, data uh, for the uh, regulatory approval. And with regard to business environment, uh, we met the uh, support to establish a center of innovation for regenerative, including regenerative medicine, and also uh, support to uh, promote standardization under the ISO in collaboration with uh, industries. 
And regarding to business collaboration, so JETRO, Japan External Trade Organization and the firm, are very active in terms of uh, promoting international cooperation. And regarding the uh, governmental budget, so small, few years, at uh, the uh, right side on the bottom. So in the uh, 2017 fiscal year, uh, regenerative medicine-related budget, governmental budget, uh, in total amount uh, 15 billion Japanese yen. At a broader sense, uh, bio-related governmental budget uh, around 260 billion, uh, billion Japanese yen. So we are very keen to promote this field as a governmental uh, activities. So one of the uh, examples of uh, METI's uh, R&D project. So to develop innovative uh, regenerative medicine products, improve quality of products, or reduce cost of the process, um, METI uh, promotes R&D project uh, with industries, universities, and medical institutes. Uh, under the Integrated Funding Agency, AMEDO, uh, we uh, METI plans and manages uh, following uh, around the project. So the uh, left hand side, a uh, cardio myocytes and nerve cells team, uh, this team set its R&D lab in the Global Innovation Center, which I mentioned the previous page. And this team uh, is developing a large scale, high quality and affordable process in order to deliver safe and effective stem cell therapy. The uh, right side uh, is the retinal pigment uh, epithelium cells and hepatocyte team. This team aims to realize an innovative GMP facility through development of a cultivation process of the cells. Uh, this is an uh, example of the uh, project. So uh, with uh, uh, many Japanese companies and institutes, uh, METI promotes uh, around the project for process design for the stabilization and scale up through a uh, cell manufacturing process. Uh, left side, uh, motion management uh, in laboratory dishes in the chalet, so motion calibration is built in for or monitoring gravity force motion. So towards the uh, machinery automation of cell manufacturing, uh, this data will help uh, the judgment of the uh, imp judgment and the improvement of uh, operational compatibility between uh, machinery and human uh, uh, manual operation. And right side uh, process time management uh, for scale up of a lot. So in the uh, dispensing process after cell expansion, cell attribute, cell character will be uh, easily are changed with process time. So it is important to consider quality allowance. So uh, from uh, quality allowance from first to final buyers in the same lot. So in this R&D project, uh, we are gathering data for uh, deciding uh, adequate lot size in storage and batch size in cell expansion. And this, is, uh, this slide shows uh, examples of uh, recent outcomes of METI's R&D project. Uh, companies which participate in our project have already commercialized the outcome as market products, such as Matrix, Flexible Modular Platform, Carriage Bags, and so on. And also, uh, in Japan, mm, many uh, regenerative uh, medicine products are developed by not only large companies, but also startups and SMEs, small and medium enterprises. Uh, METI provides not only R&D grants, but also public-private partnership investment capital uh, grants for startups and SMEs. This slide showed some Japanese uh, leading and excellent uh, startups and SMEs, uh, which we, METI, have a chance to support them. So, uh, Japan has many advantages in business of regenerative medicine. First of all, uh, Japanese government set two national strategic special zones which attract medical companies. One is the eastern region, Tokyo, Kanagawa. Uh, the other is western region, Osaka, Kyoto, Kobe. 
In this area, Japanese government grants special treatment to companies such as taxis and regulations. Second reason is that Japan is the second largest single market of medical drugs. Of course, the largest uh, market is the U.S., but in light of the new regulation, the market size of regenerative medicine in Japan may be going to become the biggest in the world. Thirdly, basic science researches in Japan are top level. Companies can cooperate with excellent scientists in Japan. Fourth, uh, there are many kinds of quality companies in Japan. For example, uh, Nipro's automatically culturing apparatus and Medinet cell manufacturing device must be useful to your companies. In addition, high quality clinical trials environment and fastest aging will help you to decide to investment in Japan. And this slide shows the, uh, the example that Japan has top level basic research environment. Uh, regarding the uh, Nobel Law Japanese Nobel laureates, uh, the university uh, which these Nobel laureates are related in uh, were uh, widely, uh, widely spread all over the Japan. So uh, you can uh, easily to find out the uh, good uh, collaborator from the academia. And regarding the Global Innovation Center of Regenerative Medicine, so uh, Japanese government uh, support to facilitate better business environment for the international collaboration opportunity. So Japan, uh, Japan opened a Global Innovation Center of Regenerative Medicine businesses for last, uh, last year. It is called Life Innovation Center, LIC, uh, LIC. Uh, which is located less than one kilometer away from the Tokyo Haneda International Airport. Uh, it's only 15 minutes uh, walk distance from the airport when a new bridge is made in three years' time. <laughs> so, uh, and also Japan needs uh, firm companies uh, also located in this uh, facility. The center is surrounded by important a public research institute in the field of regenerative medicine, such as National Institute of Health Science, NIHS, our Central Institute for Experimental Animal and Innovation Center of Nanomedicine. So we believe uh, this area will be the best place to set up your new office in Japan. And also we made the support for standardization in the uh, RM field. Uh, METI is supporting standardization of, of RM supply chain in ISO uh, TC276, uh, led by firm. So number one, an ancillary materials, and the number five, cell characterization, and the uh, other standardization candidate, number six, cell manufacture, uh, manufacturability. So uh, for them, uh, Japan, uh, Japanese company uh, are playing a key role uh, in terms of promoting the uh, standardization. Okay. And the Japan uh, is willing to help foreign companies uh, to business in Japan. Uh, JETRO, a Japan external trade organization, which is subsidies of, subsidies of my ministry, uh, which is one of the governmental trade organizations, will help you establish your company in Japan. Uh, for example, JETRO can offer business matching opportunity and provide temporary office at free of charge for up to 50 business days. Uh, you can also consult JETRO about business concerns like location, visa, labor, and taxation. So please, if you, have interested, if you are interested in uh, JETRO's activities, please contact uh, their office. So uh, nearest from here, uh, we have JETRO San Francisco branch. In addition, a uh, firm, a uh, business organization for innovative regenerative medicine, um, has a consulting counter for foreign companies interested in the Japanese market. If you want to find a business partner in Japan or get information about regenerative medicine business environment, please contact the firm. So maybe this is the last slide, I think. Um, some of the forward-looking foreign companies have already uh, entered into a promising Japanese market or started collaborative business with Japanese companies. Uh, this slide shows some examples. Uh, for example, Repricell uh, made a licensing contract with Shiseido on its hair, regener hair regenerative uh, technology. Shiseido is number one uh, cosmetic company in Japan. 
Lomva Corporate with Nikon, they started a cons uh, contract of a cell manufacturing business in Japan. Nikon is a famous company for optical instruments and semiconductors manufacturing and the cameras. And furthermore, uh, Ageris, uh, Pluristem, and Aradirus have set up their business in Japan. So uh, Meti uh, strongly expects that more companies uh, will start their business in Japan. So investment in Japan, invest in Japan is one of the top priority policies in Japan. So we will strongly assist your business. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wemura. Uh, he explained the uh, overall uh, business environment and also the governmental support for the foreign companies. And uh, we welcome uh, you to, uh, say, make uh, contact with uh, METI or, say, firm in future. And uh, I would like to uh, introduce the uh, next speaker. Uh, next, next speaker is uh, uh, Dr. Daisaku Sato, uh, who comes from uh, uh, Ministry of Health and Labor and Welfare. Uh, he is uh, one of the uh, famous person who lead the uh, uh, reform of the, uh, the uh, regulatory framework in Japan. Uh, he will explain in detail about the, such a kind of uh, reforms. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Mr. Suzuki. Um, I'm Daisak Sato from Ministry of Health, Raven and Welfare Japan, and I would like to express my appreciation to the organizers of MESA firm and arm to invite me to this very important conference in La Jolla. <clears throat> the last time I was here, um, I was from PMDA, and this time I'm from the policy side of the Japanese Health Ministry. So today I'm talking about the regulatory policy and challenges of regenerative medicines um, from product regulation side. So first, um, I give you an idea of, of overall performance of Japanese regulatory agency. Over the last three years, the new drug review speeds uh, keep fastest among the major three agencies in the world. So, um, so let me move on to the regulatory framework. So as you know, the new PMD Act was implemented in 2014, including the regulatory reform of regenerative medical product as new category. So uh, we have been um, committed to keep uh, regulatory reform over the last three years. The condition on time-limited authorization was laid down for expediting access of innovative regenerative medicine. It allows approval with exploratory clinical data, uh, reasonably likely to predict clinical benefit before completing the confirmatory study. However, PMD Act requires further safety assurance during the post-marketing phase and additional clinical data for confirmation of the evidence. So uh, in the review system, benefit and risk balance assessment, acceptable level of clinical effectiveness versus patient access to the new therapy is a key regulatory science issue. The regulatory science underpins the Japanese policy to secure earlier patient access to medical innovation for unmet medical needs in terms of social responsibility for public health. Since the implementation of the new regulation, uh, R&D of regenerative medicine has been dramatically activated as a positive effect of the regulatory reform. The number of running clinical trial protocols of the product now reached 68. While in 2012, uh, before the implementation of the new regulation, just four clinical trials existed. So we welcome around the investment, uh, either local from foreign companies. These days, uh, we have considering the concern of medical expenditure growing uh, with a rapid pace in line with high price drug launching, such as immune checkpoint inhibitors. The government of Japan is now pursuing 
mitigation of public health, public economy burden, and the promoting innovation at the same time. The reducing R&D costs is one of the um, goals of uh, regulatory policy now, and new regenerative medicine regulatory scheme is quite in line with the policy. The various agencies have various approaches to accommodate patient access, such as accelerated approval and breakthrough therapy designation. In Japan, the conditional approvals, such as regenerative medicine, uh, will be expanded to other categories like drugs. In the U.S., uh, as far as I understand, the breakthrough therapy is to be expanded to regenerative medical products under the 21st Century Cures Act. And further acceleration of the process. Um, it is so-called sakigake uh, in English for under review designation system. The pilot project has been implemented for a couple of years. Um, it's similar to U.S. breakthrough therapy designation to perform rolling submissions and the shorter review period, uh, 12 months to 6 months, uh, with condition that the sponsor must have the intention to have their products approved firstly or simultaneously in Japan. First, uh, three regenerative medical products were assigned for Sakigake on 10th February 2016. And now this year, the second round assignment, uh, three products further uh, in February this year. So you will be aware that the product technologies have been clearly derived from academic institutions and the uh, venture companies uh, in Japan. And, and also from the uh, other countries. So uh, let me touch upon the example of the conditional time limited approval. So um, the example is the hard seat. That was the first uh, approved uh, product under the uh, conditional time limited authorization two years ago. It is autologous. Um, skeletal myoblast. So then uh, we're looking forward to the new application coming soon. Uh, it could be among Sakigake products that will be expanded later by other speakers. So the conditional and time limited approval is uh, aligned for regenerative medicine taking into account of the major characteristic in order to expedite R and D and review process, the limited number of the patients available for clinical trials and difficult conduct uh, controlled study to demonstrate clinical benefit and heterogeneity of quality. Um, it will longer time. It will take longer time for clinical trial review if regulators pursue the conventional drug guidelines. And hard sheet was approved based on the exploratory clinical trials using surrogate endpoints, um, comprehensive clinical evaluation of each product. Then the confirmatory post-marketing study was needed to demonstrate the true endpoint as post-marketing commitment. For the time being, uh, we have a couple of challenges for the conditional approval process. The first one is the post-marketing observation, observational study using real-world evidence. How efficient you can perform the study uh, with high quality clinical, clinical data. And the second one is the arrangement with reimbursement scheme. Although the Japanese system is very consistent between the regulatory approval and the HDA process, the hard seat was a successful example. But the uh, hard seat uh, price was allocated uh, 15,000 US dollar for one uh, treatment. The question is um, if such consistent and predict predictable uh, reimbursement system will continue. And we have been growing attention to the electronic health records, including patient registries as powerful tools to provide an efficient and low cost opportunity for conduct pragmatic tri clinical trials using real world evidence. As a solution for the real-world evidence collections, PMDA and Japanese Society of Regenerative Medicine have jointly established clinical registry in place 
to collect patient data for clinical trials and post-marketing study in collaboration with other specific society. MHLW just announced the launch of NRMD last week. Uh, Mr. Mano will expand the system in his presentation later. So MHLW also have been developing guidelines and rules to use electronic medical records database for post-marketing surveillance uh, to secure the reliability of the study and the integrity of data uh, within this fiscal year 2017. So PMD is only a, not only a gatekeeper, uh, but enabler to facilitate sponsor to develop regulatory sound development effectively. In order to facilitate development, it's vital for both sponsor and the reg regulators to secure scientific sound discussions during the development process phase by phase. It is not simply giving advice to sponsors, but thinking together against challenges. The consultation may include preclinical and clinical uh, questions to develop your product for Japanese market. Dr. Maruyama will expand the implementation of regulatory consultation later in his presentation. So uh, in this consultation in the last couple of years, regenerative categories has been majority. The number of consultation in the regenerative medicines um, has been increasing. The proportion of the category has been growing and closer to half of r and consultations. The PMDA has uh, compiled question and answers often raised during the r and consultations uh, for the ease of sponsor to study regulatory strategy. The technical guidance was elaborated in collaboration with academic society and industry in June 2016. Particularly, the scope of the conditional and time-limited approval uh, is one of the issues to be clarified. Uh, for what type of cases the conditional approval may be applicable and considering post-marketing commitments beforehand. Discussion among PMDA and firm and JSRM will have been concluded this autumn. And we have set up new consul consult consultation mechanism to support biotech ventures, both from regulatory point of view and from perspective of forthcoming pricing under the universal health insurance system in constant manner. And this year, uh, we started the project to support sharing the experience of assessment of regenerative medical product uh, with other countries, such as uh, tumor genetic testing of cellular products. Uh, we will start supporting development of international guidelines in collaboration with uh, METI. So we'd like to contribute to the world regenerative medicine in, co in collaboration with other regulatory agencies in the world. We actively continue to participate in the international dialogues to exchange scientific information and make scientific alignment with other agencies, such as IPRF and ATMP cluster teleconference with US FDA, Health Canada, and EMA. So to conclude, on the basis of regulatory science, um, MHLW and PMDA are sitting together with sponsors to, re to realize safe and effective regenerative medicine available uh, by means of regulatory review, uh, consultation, and post-marketing support. So I also welcome you uh, to the Japanese market to benefit Japanese patients uh, who are longing for effective and safer medicine. I'm pleased to feel any question you may have on my presentation later in the panel discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Sato. Uh, he explained uh, in detail about the uh, legal, uh, legal framework in Japan, and uh, I also feel the, this attitude uh, of the uh, Ministry of Health and Labor and Welfare become uh, significantly changed, and uh, that means uh, that all the industrial, uh, industrial uh, the corporations uh, can get some 
strong support from the uh, Ministry of Health. So it is quite a big uh, change uh, compared to over 10 years ago. <laughs> I'm very happy to hear that. And the next speaker is uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Yoshiaki Maruyama. He comes from PMDA, and he will explain in detail about the, uh, the Sakigake designation system and also other uh, topics uh, which was uh, introduced by uh, Dr. Sato. Please. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Dr. Uh, Suzuki-san, to kind introduction. Uh, Good morning, and gen ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Yoshaki Maruyama from PMDA. So uh, this time, this is the second time to come here. So uh, last time, last year, okay, uh, last year, I present the uh, scientific advice system in Japan, but today, uh, I just focus on that uh, uh, Sakigake designation system uh, that uh, already uh, Dr. Sato uh, present the overview a uh, little bit uh, previous uh, presentation, but uh, I just uh, uh, explain the detail of that this is this uh, new uh, Sakigake uh, systems today. Oh, sorry. So uh, this is the uh, outline. Uh, the before uh, start uh, introduce a Sakigake uh, designation system. I'd like to introduce the strategy of uh, Sakigake. So um, the act of uh, the promote healthcare and the medical strategy was uh, promulgated in Japan on uh, March uh, 2014. The act is uh, designed to the uh, uh, create the system to support uh, research and development in uh, healthcare as well as uh, uh, medical industry that uh, will support the world class uh, standards of medical service. So uh, that's why uh, that the Japanese uh, people can live long in uh, good health. So according to the uh, regulatory reform, uh, or the, uh, I mean that the PMD Act or this uh, uh, Act to the promote healthcare and the medical strategy, so MHW uh, drew up a new strategy to uh, read the world in the uh, practical application of innovative medical products. And then uh, announced the strategy of the Sakigake in 2014. So this strategy is uh, not uh, specially for the uh, regenerative medical product, uh, but also uh, this strategy covers uh, drugs and medical devices. So uh, after the discussion, uh, two schemes are uh, prioritized to uh, realize to the read of the world in the particular uh, application of innovative medical products. So uh, Sakigake designation system and scheme for the rapid uh, authorization of um, approved uh, drugs. So, So next, uh, I will introduce the uh, detail of Sakigake uh, designation system today. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> so uh, this slide shows that the advantage for the uh, this the designation system. So uh, I explain you use this image. So uh, advantage is uh, mainly the five points. So first, oh sorry, uh, the consultation is more uh, rapidly. Uh, standard is uh, around two months, takes two months, but uh, uh, this Sakyaki scheme uh, takes one month. And second point is uh, uh, prior review and that means that uh, uh, so this pro designated product can 
uh, sponsor can submit the rolling submission before the uh, marketing authorization application submission. And the uh, third point is the uh, review time is more shorter. So st standard, it takes two, 12, one, one year, but uh, six months for the uh, Sakigake uh, products. Oh, this is a, uh, <coughs> and, and this, oh, sorry, sorry, fourth point is uh, so uh, review partner system. So uh, PMDA as a uh, managed as a concierge. So overall management for the full process towards to uh, approval. And the fifth point is uh, some product maybe takes a long time to uh, collect in the uh, post marketing data. So uh, especially uh, uh, safety data, uh, that product uh, can uh, strengths the post marketing uh, phase, uh, some some products. So uh, this slide shows the criteria for the designation. So in principle, the product uh, should have a novel uh, mechanism of action uh, that is different from uh, those uh, approved approved uh, drugs. And the second point is. Uh, uh, the product is uh, to against that serious or life-threatening uh, medical condition or uh, medical condition with uh, persistent uh, symptoms for the which uh, there is no other uh, curative uh, treatment. And the third point is highly uh, effective treatment against the target uh, medical condition. And the fourth point, uh, that's uh, very unique, uh, product is uh, for which first in human study was conducted in Japan or uh, product for the which uh, proof of concept study was conducted in Japan. So uh, this slide shows that the process for the de designation. So uh, we just start the pilot in 2015 and already uh, made every year, the currently. So uh, MHW uh, is uh, conduct uh, hearing on the candidate product to apply, and then PMDA evaluates the applied appli applied product and it set uh, priorities. Then uh, PMDA reports the designation. Uh, result to MHW. So uh, this slide uh, shows that uh, uh, de designated product for uh, uh, regenerative medi medical product. So six product holder was already uh, de designated. And then uh, for the drugs, now that uh, 10 product is, is uh, for the drugs and then five uh, product for the medical device at this mo moment. So, uh, so f first product, uh, the autologous bone marrow derived uh, mesenchymal stem cell for the uh, nerve syndrome and dysfunction uh, caused by a, a spinal cord injury. So this product was uh, developed, not was, now developing <laughs> by Dr. Honmo. Uh, so uh, Sapporo Medical University, uh, he will be uh, present the detail, I think that uh, later on his presentation. So uh, second product is uh, oncolytic uh, virus vector uh, for the malignant uh, glioma. The third uh, product is uh, autologous uh, cardiac progenitor stem cells for uh, uh, pediatric uh, congenital uh, heart disease. 
And the fourth product is a uh, autologous oral mucosal uh, derived esophageal uh, cell sheet for that uh, uh, extensive uh, endoscopic uh, submucosal uh, dissection in uh, esophagus cancer. And five fifth uh, product is a uh, dopamine uh, neural uh, precursor cell derived from the uh, iPS cell for uh, Parkinson's disease. And uh, sixth uh, product is a prepotent uh, progenitor cell uh, derived from uh, allogenic adult bone marrow uh, for acute brain uh, infarct infarctions. So uh, this slide shows that uh, the relation uh, between the sakigake consultation and uh, marketing authorization. Uh, before uh, rolling submission here, so uh, PMDA conscious uh, manages for the whole process uh, every month, and then uh, once uh, uh, collected the data, a sponsor can apply to the uh, Sakigake consultation. So uh, f these five trucks as one package, uh, cost is 90,000 US dollar. Uh, so this consultation is uh, uh, mandatory. So uh, during uh, the consultation, uh, PMDA review uh, the uh, quality, safety, and efficacy data, uh, and as well as uh, advice the how to finalize that uh, these nine documentations, uh, which uh, should attach the marketing authorization application submission. So once uh, five consultations are finished, a uh, sponsor can submit the MAA. So uh, target total review time is uh, six months. So after the, uh, so that the submission is uh, just one pathway, but uh, after that uh, review pathway, they that divided two scheme, the normal uh, authorization pathway and conditional and time limited uh, authorization pathway. So both are same, same, uh, same, and uh, six six months period is a uh, 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 review time for that uh, this uh, de designated uh, product. So uh, for the conditional and time limited authorization, the PMD Act uh, requires further safety uh, assurance uh, during post marketing phase. And additional clinical data for the confirmation of the evidence for the second application, uh, following the within the maximum seven years. So, if the collecting the control data is difficult uh, during post-marketing phase, it may not uh, easy to confirm of efficacy and difficult to sort out for the uh, conditional and time-limited uh, authorization pathway. So uh, PMD discussed the feasibility of the collecting data on the post-marketing phase and advised the uh, plan uh, during the rolling submission. So uh, the, the, the patient registry database, database has been the, in the place for the facility uh, regenerative medical products. So uh, on on the pre, pre and the post marketing phase. So PMDA uh, expect the patient registry database to gather the clinical data to use as external uh, control uh, near future. So I guess uh, Dr. Mano, the next speaker, uh, will present the detail for the, that database. So, uh, 
so that uh, this Sakigake system and then this uh, rapid uh, early access schemes, so that product is very short to research and develop to the marketing authorization. So uh, now just uh, six product is already uh, designated, but I, I hope uh, this year also uh, uh, May may MHW announce that uh, uh, the, uh, new candidate for this this year. So uh, this is a summary. So rolling submission is uh, an ex existential uh, mechanism to start uh, review and inspections as early as possible to achieve the ambitious goal. So enable to partner and enabling. Uh, partnership between the applicant and regulator to deliver the product to patient. So uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mariyama. Uh, the, he's uh, encouraging, uh, say, presentation, uh, the accelerate the EU participation to the Japanese, say, uh, business. And uh, I think uh, you recognize uh, there is uh, uh, one uh, U.S. Uh, company involved for the Sakigake. It is uh, Asasis. Uh, they uh, involve the the project of the one of the uh, six uh, regenerative uh, medicine uh, from uh, uh, Sakigake designation. Okay. Next speaker is uh, uh, you have already heard the name of the of uh, the speakers, uh, Mr. Kyosuke Mano. He comes from the. Uh, the Japanese Society for Regenerative Medicine, the Academia Societies, and uh, uh, we work, uh, firm, uh, work together closely with uh, uh, the uh, JSRM. Uh, he will explain the, about the uh, uh, clinical registries uh, led by uh, JSRM. Please. Thank you for your introduction, Mr. Suzuki. Uh, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to introduce uh, nationwide registry jointly developed with PMDA, which is called uh, NRMD, the abbreviation of the National Regenerative Medicine Database. So uh, the San Diego is uh, very well known about its uh, craft beer. So some of you, including me, drink too much last, uh, <laughs> last night, but uh, I hope everyone is wake up right now. Okay, uh, let me start this presentation. So uh, before uh, introducing the database, uh, I would like to introduce the, my con uh, institution called Jasmine so Society for Regenerative Medicine, which is uh, not ordinary uh, academic society, so uh, uh, we have some unique points, so uh, I will introduce the uh, academy itself. Our vision is uh, to deliver regenerative medicine in safe and effective in, and quick manner. And we are welcoming uh, every stakeholder from the academia and the in industry. And also the government. And uh, our aim is going to deliver the products uh, and the treatments to the patients from basic research to real world applications. So uh, we have uh, very diverse members from the academia and industry government and uh, which covers the basic research to the uh, ethical professionals, uh, legal professionals and uh, reg regulatory authorities and uh, economics so on. 
So this is a, uh, these are the unique functions of JSRM. We are extracting issues from industry, government, and patients, just like as in think tanks, and committing to to make the actual solution to the issues revealed, just like the business entity, and acquiring government's competitive funds as a community. So, just like a uh, research institute. And we are making policy proposals in regular basis to push regenerative medicine into the social implementation. This is a remarkable example of uh, our policy proposal called Yokohama Declaration to 20. 12, which is pushing National Congress forward. As a outcomes, two laws are established. Uh, thanks to my previous speakers uh, introduced the Act on the Safety of Regenerative Medicine and the Pharmaceuticals and Medical Devices Act. Two acts are uh, enacted by the Congress. And we are now conducting a research called Regenerative Medicine National Consortium, which is a nationwide open innovation platform to promote clinical researches and make regenerative medicine be general treatment. So, uh, so far, uh, many technologies and uh, know-hows and experiences are uh, enclosed in each institution so far because the regenerative medicine clinical uh, research is a uh, very novel attempt. S but uh, in this National Re Regenerative Medicine Consortium, uh, we, JSRM, as a nationwide society, can actually gather the data and the experiences and spread it to all over the Japan. This is called the National Consortium. So uh, let's get into the database uh, introduced by my colleagues. Uh, NRMD, the National Regenerative Medicine Database, is this uh, already developed to gather uh, real world evidences about the regenerative medicine products. So uh, we developed a good post-marketing study practice standard compatible database for regenerative medicine clinical researches and approved regenerative medicine products. So this system is uh, com a computer computerized system validation proof. So what is Computerized system validation, the CSV. Uh, it's not a comma separated value. It's it's a, a suite of scheme, which is the documented process of assuring the computerized system does exactly what it's designed to do in a consistent repro uh, reproductive manner. So. Uh, Needless to say, uh, the quality of healthcare data is quite important. And uh, this CSV system is assuring the quality of data. And actually, we spent a lot of money to get it CSV proof. So in this database, uh, we put a cell source archive in the first, most first stage and uh, clinical research continues and the approval and the post-marketing study comes. Um, our database enables this these 
uh, each phase's data gathered in one and uh, one stop database and uh, vice versa uh, we can provide a reverse translational research from the case to the cell source the when uh, for example when uh, uh, adverse events happens uh, we can uh, trace the cell itself to use this database. So that this database enables seamless translational, reverse translational research from clinical investigation to PMS by acquire, acquiring real-world evidences from all the clinical cases to evaluate their safety and efficacy. And the new approval pathway with this integrated database. NRMD slash CR, which means clinical research, is, covers the clinical research and the clinical trials. Uh, some of you may know uh, in Japan we have two uh, clinical investigation system. And uh, NRMD PMS is for after approval, uh, post-marketing study is covered by this NRMDP, NRMD PMS. And PM, uh, Dr. Mariama said uh, as uh, PMD can provide the regulatory consultation to each phases. And uh, also the Japanese Society for Regenerative Medicine can provide the technological support at this stage uh maybe next two years so we P jsrm and pmd is uh, shaking hand with developing this database and uh, we are uh, harmonized in its uh, consultation from the early stages so uh, please use JSRM to develop your products in Japan. We can be a uh, help. And then RMDCR has uh, also historical control data when uh, when the clinical research uh, is conducted. So that this uh, control data can be used as a reference for new products. So the new product developers doesn't uh, don't need new controls data so uh, it will be the very cost effective project so to use the uh, uh, control data of NRMD which can be shortened the re clinical trials and uh, half and uh, almost half and the cost of frontiers. The NRMD is, uh, consists of two story. The first story is uh, jointly developed with PMDA as Mariama, Dr. Mariama said. Uh, and the second story is jointly developed with uh, respective academic societies. So, uh, you know, uh, the regener regenerative medicine is a very uh, wide and uh, diverse academic disciplines, so we need help from the respective uh, expertise academic societies. So in the NRMDCR, IPSC derived RPE cell for AMD patients. The sec second story in in second story, we develop uh, each pro uh, each database with the expertise academies. So, NRMDCR for IPSC derived RP cell for AMD patients are developed with the Japanese Ophthalmological so Society, and NRMD PMS uh, the heart sheet. Uh, as uh, Dr. Sato said, 
is uh, developed with the Japanese Heart Associated Societies. So the markers and the fields of and the visits of the database is uh, consensus with the, those uh, professional societies. And next to uh, heart sheet, uh, orthopedic researches will coming will be coming to the database, which is uh, developed, which will be developed with the Japanese Orthopedic Association. So at this stage, we are calling these sixteen uh, regenerative medicine soci related societies. And we have uh, their knowledge to expand the second f story of the regenerative medicine database. Uh, and this will be my last slide. Uh, the first case on our database will be the first in human clinical research using donor IPSC derived cell with the first case on this da database, which is uh, conducted by Professor Masayo Takahashi. Uh, so uh, I, we are very honored to have such a premier clinical research using IPSC uh, will be the first case. So thank you for having me and find me at the meeting and ask anything. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mano. Uh, he explained uh, in detail about, about the registry, and uh, you may find out him. He's uh, quite uh, calculate. <laughs> Easy to find him out. <laughs> okay. Uh, next speaker is uh, uh, the Professor Osamu Homo. Uh, he's uh, quite uh, a famous person uh, in Japan uh, in the area of uh, regenerative medicine, and uh, he will explain uh, his uh, uh, excellent works uh, to the audience. Uh, uh, Professor Homo, please. Uh, <coughs> good morning. Uh, I'm uh, uh, Sam Homo, came from uh, uh, Japan. So today I'm going to talk about uh, our experience of uh, actual approved case. So our product uh, is a regenerative medicine for a spinal cord injury. So standard treatment for spinal cord injury is uh, acute surgery and rehabilitation, but little improvement in outcome after spinal cord injury, and no curative treatment for spinal cord injury, and patients are suffering from the severe after effect for a long time. So total number of the patient is about uh, 100,000 people <coughs> in Japan. And uh, cumulative incidence is about uh, 5,000 people per year in Japan. And annual medical cost is about 0.5 billion uh, dollars per year in Japan. And cost of social security is over 10, 10 billion dollars per year in the world. So outline of our investigational drugs. So bone marrow was obtained from posterior iliac crest of patient under local anesthesia. The mesenchymal stem cell are uh, isolated and incubated in cell processing center for about two weeks. So about uh, 100 million MSC are packed for our product and uh, intravenous drip uh, containing MSC is given for 30 to 6 minutes. And uh, <coughs> it takes uh, 10 to 15 minutes to correct bone marrow, uh, which is less uh, invasive for patient. So intravenous uh, infusion of MSC have therapeutic, therapeutic efficacy, uh, regardless the patient have illness of a brain or spinal cord. It is expected to have therapeutic efficacy, even though it takes a long time from the onset. So this is the therapeutic mechanisms. 
MSC accumulate in the spinal cord injury regions. Uh, suppression of necrotic cavity in the spinal cord and neuronal protection for cerebral, uh, cerebral, uh, cerebral motor neurons. Differentiation of MSC into neuronal cells. Remyelination of the demyelinated axon. Regeneration and sprouting of damaged axon. And stabilization of blood spinal cord barrier. So uh, <coughs> before investigators initiate clinical trials, uh, we had a consultation uh, with PMDA, uh, which name is uh, a Regulatory Strategy Consultation on RRD. So our aim is uh, approval as a cell product regenerative medicines of autologous mesenchymal stem cells from bone marrow for a spinal cord injury patient. So consultation, consultation was safety issue, quality, uh, cell production and uh, GMP regulation and design for clinical trials. So our impression for uh, regulatory strategy uh, consultation by PMDA, so it was very hard for us, academia, uh, to launch the investigator-initiated clinical trial because it requires strictly uh, strict uh, regulatory hurdles. But a uh, regulatory strategy consultation of PMDA extensively support our uh, us, academia to overcome the strict pharmaceutical regulations. So they are also very fast and the project was largely accelerated. So I will present a, a clinical case, just one case. So he is a 48 years male and he hit forehead by falling from 10 meter platform diving and he got a tetraplegia which means uh, his arm doesn't work, his leg doesn't work. So he is totally bedridden and it is uh, it, it will continue forever maybe. So after uh, 1.5 months later uh, we decided to inject the uh, MSC. This is a before uh, injection. His uh, elbow works a little bit, but he could not extend, extend the elbow. So his finger does not move. His legs also uh, does not move. So he is completely bedridden. He could not do anything by himself. So this is uh, just after injection. His motor deficit, his motor deficit getting recovered very fast. So one week after injection, he could uh, have a training for walking. So this is one month after injection he could stand up by himself. So three months after, uh, his work is, is getting very good. So this is a uh, six months later. So he could uh, play a piano. So during clinical trials, uh, we, uh, this product, STR01, had the Sakigake assignment for the first time in regenerative medicine product in Japan. And uh, newspapers in Japan announced a lot. So we had the Sakigake plus we will have uh, the expedited approval system. So this system is very good because during clinical trial, during clinical trial, we could start the sakigake uh, consultation. For example, uh, before we finish the clinical trial, we could start the, for example, CMC or non-clinical uh, <coughs> consultation. And as soon as we finish the clinical trial, we could uh, have a consultation about clinical 
GCP uh, GLP uh, compliance or GCTP compliance. So it is a very fast uh, <coughs> system to MAA. So we will have a short uh, six months review and after that, probably a conditional time limited authorization. So <coughs> post-marketing data collection is very important after conditional time limited authorization. Uh, after, uh, oh, after conditional time limited authorization, uh, we will have to uh, <coughs> have to have uh, uh, post marketing data collection, and simultaneously uh, we will have uh, as a list, uh, con um, pros pros prospective uh, concomitant uh, data collection. For example, the registry system by academic society, uh, then uh, the application will have to be. So taken together, our experience uh, is, uh, the, um, our experience of the fast track approval process was first a uh, regulatory strategy consultation before clinical trial. And we did the clinical trial and simultaneously uh, we could have a sakigake consultation. Then we will have the six months review and conditional time limited authorization. That's a very uh, fast track uh, process. So uh, our impression for Sakigake, so both uh, academia, we, and applicant company together received extensive support from PMDA. And priority uh, consulta about the uh, priority consultations, we received frequent and extensive consultation even in the short term. So prior review, about prior review, uh, we are doing the rolling submission, simultaneous review uh, during cl clinical trial. So priority review, uh, we will have six months review and about the review partner system concierge. So we have the total arrangement toward uh, marketing authorization application. Thus, uh, Japan has become a suitable place for us to develop the innovative medicine in terms of regulatory aspect. So our impression for uh, conditional time limited approval system. So conditional and time limited approval, approval provides earlier deliver of the innovative regenerative medicine uh, for life-threatening and serious patients. So we are confident that a strengthening post-marketing data collection system and registry system by academic society can allow us to make a strong evidence for efficacy and safety issue, which is more appropriate and unique system to develop the innovative regenerative medicine in Japan. So a new facility of an uh, applicant company, uh, Nipro, uh, <coughs> the building uh, is, uh, a new facility is uh, built in our uh, university. And uh, they will sell the sell product very soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Homo. Uh, the, you got uh, uh, good examples and also the uh, experiences from uh, uh, Professor. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, we have a limited time. If you have really want to uh, make a uh, say question, <laughs> please raise a hand. We have a few times. If not, uh, we, I will move. Oh yes, please.
So uh, now the PMD has a new uh, consolidation menu for the ancestry uh, materials. So we we uh, reviewed that uh, how how meet our uh, standard for the uh, biologic. So that uh, please use that, that consultation. And then I, I think your question is uh, answer is uh, please contact the PMDF. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have a limited time. Uh, later on, uh, uh, after the, uh, the the sessions, you may uh, uh, the catch the the speakers to. Uh, uh, to uh, raise a, uh, to ask them uh, some questions. Okay, uh, last the uh, part is a closing remarks. Uh, it, it will be made by uh, Dr. Akihiko uh, Iwai, uh, vice chairman of the firm. Please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Suzuki san. And so uh, I'm Akihiko Iwai, vice chairman of the firm. First of all, I'd like to say, uh, firm would like to say thank you very much so, for all the attendees so, visiting so, Japan session as an uh, early bird. Okay. And uh, firm also appreciate the excellent uh, five presentations uh, by five speakers. Uh, Masahiro Uemura, uh, Daisaku Sato, and uh, Yoshiaki I Maruyama, and Kyosuke Mano, and uh, Osamu Homo, thank you very much. And uh, let me summarize uh, today's con uh, content, highlighting so several key points. Uh, as you know, the uh, kind of a trinity of so, uh, government, uh, academia, and industry uh, uh, reinforcing business of regenerative medicine in Japan. And you know that the market so, uh, of Japan is for the uh, uh, digital medicine is the second largest in all over the world. That's the background. And so uh, today, so the speaker so explained so uh, the several uh, concrete actions. Let me summarize five points. The first one is uh, Japan uh, has new uh, legal frameworks, which includes PMD Act, uh, that is conditional approval systems for digital medicine, and Sakingake. Uh, uh, for under so reviewing uh, designation systems, and also uh, re, uh, legal framework. The second point is that so we have a uh, uh, new platform or, or, uh, for the uh, Japan uh, Regional Medicine Patient Registry Initiative, so using so NRMD, and that's the National RM, uh, Regional Medicine Database. That's the second point. The third point is a consultation and advised by PMDA. You know, the, the, the number four is so Japan has a, a, a kind of established a, a certain zone for uh, regenerative medicine, special zone. And so the five is uh, Japan uh, regenerative medicine community uh, proceed with a kind of standardization of the product. And those five points are very so, uh, important in, in Japan. Anyway, so uh, you know, the uh, firm so also pass uh, collaboration so between Japan and so other countries. I hope so. Today's so uh, Japan session deepened uh, your understanding in the concrete so action of digital medicine in Japan. Uh, when you do like uh, any so relationships in Japan, uh, please don't hesitate to contact so firm. Thank you very much. <laughs>